Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship on this day where the temperature is actually bearable in the church. Are there any blessings we'd like to share before we begin today? I would like to come give France a gold medal for the best opening ceremonies I've ever seen of Olympic Games because of the inclusivity that they did with that. Well, the, just the whole creative thing, the idea of taking it out of the state and using the beautiful scent. But usually the flame is only just a few of their own athletes mm -hmm. running it. They included 24 different athletes to carry that for the symbolism of the 2024. Mm -hmm. They used different countries. It wasn't only France. Then when they had the 100-year-old Olympian pass part of the torch, I mean, it just goes on and on. I still didn't know where the torch was going. <laughs> <laughs> right? I was like, why do you miss it? Well, I know, but then to have it in a big basin, then they let it go up in the Mongolfier. I mean, I just thought this is just, this is just. So this morning we give thanks for and we celebrate the inclusion and the, and then, right, the creativity the and the joy. Of I know, and then, I mean, even having see uh, the, the uh, song was so chosen, Hymn him of Love. Mm -hmm. Try, I, I did this, and of course, what brought me, the mechanical horse running. The spirit, the spirit of all of it and the cake. I, well, I give friends a gold medal for um, I don't know that I'm in the business of awarding gold medals, uh, but I am in the business of lifting, lifting this up and giving thanks to God for this gift from France to the world. Any other blessings? All right, with that said, Pastor Chris will be back next week. He should be in the office during the week. Let us turn our hearts and our minds now toward the worship of God.
Please join me in the call to worship. This is the day the Lord has made. God, God it, it is, is good, good for, for us, us to be, be here. here. We're not confined to our beds today. God, God it, it is, is good, good for us, us to be here. here. Our lungs are breathing and our hearts are beating. God, God it, it is, is good, good for us to be, be here. here. We're here because you called us to come. God, God it, it is good, good for us to be here. here. <clears throat> We're here to see the view from the mountaintop. God, God it, it is good, good for us to be here. here. We're here to get strength for the valley. God, God it, it is good, good for us to be here. here. This is the day the Lord has made. We're here, here to rejoice and be glad God. in it. Let's sing the first two verses of the opening hymn. Eternal God, who created all things from the void, teach us to know the power of prayer. Fill us with your peace and your love. Fill our darkness with your light. Fulfill in us the potential for which we were born and were called into your church. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, who sought your presence even in the rush of life. Amen. Siblings in Christ, hear the good news. God knows our hearts. God knows we are not perfect. But God's love is perfect. We are forgiven, loved, and restored. Thanks be to God. Our first scripture reading this morning is Philippians 4, verses 6 and 7. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, 
which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Our second reading for today is taken from the book of Isaiah. But you, Israel, my servant, <coughs> Jacob, whom I have chosen, the offspring of Abraham, my friend, you who I took from the ends of the earth and called from its farthest corners, saying to you, you are my servant. I have chosen you and not cast you off. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be afraid, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my victorious right hand. All who are incensed against you shall be ashamed and disgraced. Those who strive against you shall be as nothing and shall perish. You south shall seek those who contend with you, but you shall not find them. Those who war against you shall be as nothing at all. For I, the Lord your God, hold your right hand. It is I who say to you, do not fear, I will help you. Now let us say together, for the, for the word, word of God, God in scripture, scripture for, for the, the word, word of God, God among us, for, for the word of God, God with us. Thanks, thanks be to God. God. And now, O oh Lord, May the words of my lips and the meditations of all of our hearts be always acceptable to you, our Lord and our Redeemer. Legend has it that the phrase, may you live in interesting times, is an old Chinese curse. That is untrue. It seems to have been attributed to the Chinese by Neville Chamberlain in a speech just before World War II. But it became popular due to a speech given in Cape Town, South Africa by Robert Kennedy in June of 1966. He used the quotation this way, quote, there is a Chinese curse that says, may he live in interesting times. Like it or not, we live in interesting times, end quote. Well, I, for one, like it not. As a matter of fact, I am sick and tired of living in interesting times. COVID chaos and grief, political upheaval, wars, climate change, illness, deaths of people we love, caring for the young and the old, making a living, I could keep adding to the list, and I am sure you could as well. My 25-year-old son is passionate about the state of the world and the state of the country. In the midst of all that has been going on in this summer of political conventions, he wanted to know why I was not engaged to the degree he is. I replied, I have a limited supply of adrenaline. I might need it for the next emergency. So I am choosing to reserve it for now. As I reflected on the theme, the theme of concern and prayer <clears throat> for this week's sermon, I realized that my need for a reserve supply of adrenaline is really about fear. <coughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. Retired United Methodist Bishop Reuben Job writes, quote, to fear is not unusual, and sometimes it is a necessary and life-saving experience. Fear alerts us to danger that could harm us 
or even take our lives. However, when our fears dictate our actions, we can become paralyzed and incapable of thinking clearly or living faithfully. Paralyzed and incapable of thinking clearly or living faithfully, end quote. Exactly. He has hit the nail on the head for me, and maybe for you too. <clears throat> Our scriptures for today direct us to bring everything to God in prayer and supplication. And that is always the first thing we should do. The passage from Isaiah is a reminder of our call to servanthood and God's promises. I have chosen you. I will help you. Be not afraid. The words, do not be afraid, appear throughout our scriptures. As the Israelites prepare to enter the land, Joshua is told, be strong and do not live in fear, for I will be with you. The 23rd Psalm reminds us to fear no evil. Do not be afraid is the first thing the angels tell the shepherds in the field, watching their flocks by night. Jesus tells his disciples, peace I give to you, peace I leave with you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. How are we to apply, to apply, do not be afraid to the interesting times in which we live? Robert Kennedy observed that interesting times are, quote, times of danger and uncertainty, but they are also more open to the creative energy of men than any other time in history, end quote. Fear is the first reaction to times of danger and uncertainty. But the creative energy referred to is a call to courage for Christians, one that summons us to move forward confident that God is with us, will be with us, working in us and with us toward the new creation we are promised no matter what. <clears throat> the hymn we are singing this morning is one I often cling to in prayer when times are tough. It is branded on my soul. Like all of us, my life has had times of deep fear and worry when I was not sure I could find a way forward or even if I could survive. When through the deep waters I call thee to go, the rivers of woe shall not thee overflow. When through fiery trials thy pathway shall lie, my grace all sufficient shall be thy supply. That soul, though all hell shall endeavor to shake, I'll never, no, never, no, never forsake. These are promises God made and kept. I have sung the entire hymn, silently or aloud, in so many places and at so many times in my life. It gives me courage and reminds me to whom I cling when hoping is hard and courage is far from me. I also find courage in the strength of the community of faith. One of the great privileges in my ministry is hearing your stories and knowing how brave you are. 
in a congregation I served years ago. I found myself one Sunday morning looking from the pulpit at the faces I knew and loved in the congregation. There was much division and many hurt hearts. I looked out at the congregation thinking, if only you knew that person sitting on the other side of the pews who you are angry with, if you only knew what that person is carrying and how very brave they are, you could, surely could not be angry with them. Of course, the things shared with me are shared in confidence, and I could not and will not violate that trust. But I remember this instinct, this insight, when I stand in front of this or any other congregation. Your courage to live faithfully in interesting times helps me to find my own. And I hope you find that same courage in God and in one another. That is one of the great gifts of life in a community of faith. Whether or not we like living in interesting times, here we are. Whatever lies ahead will require our courage and our hope in Jesus and in each other as the ones he has called for the sake of the world. Bishop Job puts it this way, quote, to walk with God is to be reassured of direction, guidance, and strength for our daily journey. What do we have to fear when we are in God's presence and care? Nothing at all. It does not mean that we will be spared discouragement, disease, or death itself. It does mean that we will never be alone. It means that we will be given strength to the demands of our daily lives. It means we will receive wisdom to judge wisely and well in the direction we must take. From fear to courage is the natural journey of all that walk with God. May we join God and one another walking on the journey with courage. Amen. Please join me in the response. O oh God, because you are the source of all life and love and being, we call you creator. Because we know the history of your presence among your people, we call you Lord. 
Because our Savior, Jesus Christ, your obedient child, knew you intimately and spoke of you so, we call you Father. Because you are present in the act of birth and because you shelter, nurture, and care for us, we call you Mother. Because you hold us up and give us strength and courage when we are weak and in need, we call you Sustainer. Because we know beyond pain lies your promise of all things made new, we call you Hope. Because you are the means of liberation and the way to freedom, we call you Redeemer. Confident that you will hear, we call upon you with all the names that make you real to us, the names that create an image in our minds and hearts, an image that our souls can understand and touch. And yet, we know that you are more than all of these. Blessings, Blessings and power, power glory and honor, honor be unto you, our God. God. Amen. Amen. And now let us bring our gifts before God. In Christ, we have a love that will not let us go. Through an offering, let us share this love in our community and to the ends of the earth. Almighty God, accept all that we offer you this day and give us generous hearts to serve you and all who claim our help. Amen.
Let us continue together in the spirit of prayer. Good and gracious God, we come before you this morning seeking strength and courage for the days ahead. We pray for courage to be the people who you have called us to be, people who seek justice and peace through your love for all your people. We struggle with questions that seem to have no answers and problems that seem to have no solutions. So many seem divided and at war with one another, either through words or worse, through guns and killing. Surely, Lord, we humans must test your patience. But we know that your love is all-encompassing and always forgiving. We know and struggle with our imperfections and our shortcomings, knowing that you are always there waiting for us. You are our hope for ourselves and for the world. And, in it, and it is in this hope that we live and move and have our being. Oh God, this morning we lift up those in our congregation who are sick or hurting in any way, especially Carol, Marie and John, Ed, Ellen, and all those whose names we lift up aloud or silently in our hearts. Give them peace and strength to face their situations. Give strength to the addicted. Comfort to those who are victims of violence. Help us find ways to feed the hungry and clothe the naked. We also lift up those who are bullies, persons who are perpetrators of harm and violence, those who feel the need to put others down through name calling and jokes. They too need your love and healing. We ask your blessing and protection for all those competing in the Olympics and those attending. Help us to see and celebrate the talents of these athletes. In that celebration, may we see the possibility of hope, compassion, and love for one another. O oh God, we ask you to help us be change agents in this world, your ambassadors of hope. Give us courage to speak out about our faith, to teach those around us about your love for all people, and to lead by example. We pray these things in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please join in our uh, closing hymn, How Firm a Foundation will sing verses 3, 4, and 5.
in the benediction. Rejoice always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this, For this is God's will for us, for us in, Christ in Christ Jesus. Go where your best prayers take you. Amen.